Tracy from Kazadan's Equestrian and welcome to this week's video. This week I'm taking some more look at seniors and specifically I'm looking at senior horse nutrition. Now if you're new to this channel please if you enjoy the video don't forget to subscribe like and share the video around and if you're not new and you're one of my subscribers well welcome back and hang in there for some information about feeding your senior horse. So if you've looked at any other of my videos in the Senior Horse series, you'll hear me say that it's actually quite hard to define when your horse is old or not old. A lot of this comes down to the individual horse and a lot like people, some age better than others. Um, some start to get signs of aging earlier or not. So if you have a horse that is perhaps over 15, even 20, but still behaves really well, has great energy, keeping their weight, no issues, body score of about um, four or five out of nine on a body score scale, um, you probably don't need to change anything that you're doing. Maybe the only thing that I'd recommend at that point is to get baseline bloods done by the vet so that you can compare this and check whether there's anything going wrong with your horse in the future. Some of the problems as horses age actually mean they do not get the nutrition, the nutrition or the nutrients are not absorbed as well in their gut as happened for them when they were younger. Some of the common problems that we have are dentition problems. So they have problem chewing, um, especially straw, long type of hay. In general, as horses age, they can, like people, just lose their appetite so it can be harder to get the amount of nutrition that they need into them. Pain is something that um, can cause a lack of appetite as well so if your horse has any chronic pain, arthritis etc you may find that that is what's causing it to lose its appetite. Another thing that can happen is if your horse is um, kept in a herd in a paddock then as they age, they can sometimes drop down the level of hierarchy and actually not be allowed to feed as much. For example, if you've got a paddock with a round bale, you may find the older horse getting chased away a little bit more and not able to get in there and eat as much as when they were higher in the hierarchy. So how do we manage our senior horse's food and diet? So as I said earlier, if you have one of these horses that is just young at heart and in body, and the body's going well, the horse is going well, you probably don't need to change anything. However, if this isn't the case, the first thing to do is to rule out overall health problems. You'll, if you have a look at some of my other videos in the senior series, we have problems with Cushing's that can happen, metabolic issues, and particularly dental issues with our older horses. The other things that can occur are liver and kidney damage, and also just um, more inflammation in the gut. So once we know what we're dealing with with the senior horse, it is a lot easier to work out the best way to feed them and keep weight on them. In reality, our senior horses fall into one of five categories. Healthy and a good weight. Healthy, but overweight. Of course, healthy but underweight. Our metabolic Cushing's um, laminitic risk horses and the horses that have very obvious dental or chewing problems. So what's important to do is to categorize your horse into one of those and then look at a feeding regime that will suit. The categories of the diet that we need to address is definitely forage and fiber overall energy, and then is anything supplementary required? So a normal rule of thumb for forage is about 2% of your horse's body weight in dry matter of forage. Often older horses find it much easier to eat grass than dry hay, particularly as I mentioned earlier, if it's very stalky. So if your senior is overweight, one of the things that you can do is one, restrict grass intake, especially when the sugar is level is high in the grass. 
you can drop the forage to about 1.5% of body weight um, and sometimes even more but generally if you need to go below this you really should have your veterinarian involved and be doing it under their advice. If you can Divide these feeds up into as many feeds as you can smaller, so weigh the amount of hay, and divide it up into at least three feeds a day, so you're not risking ulceration to add to the problems of not the horse not being able to get the nutritional value out of the food you're giving him. If you have an underweight horse, then the first level of change is to up that forage to about 2.5% of their body weight in dry matter. With all of these, we really do want to slow down the rate of eating. So anything, unless you've got a horse that is struggling to chew, um, the other horses, we want to prolong the amount of time that they're taking to get that forage into their stomach and preferably not leaving the stomach empty much at all. If you have one of these unusual horses that is um, a Cushing's horse or laminitis risk and is underweight, this can really be quite tricky. And sadly, you will need to put a lot more effort into either soaking hay or sourcing hay that is very, very low in sugar or planting grass, having some kind of pasture that is very, very low in sugar. But to keep these tricky horses going well, this is something that we just need to do. Horses that have dental problems are way better off on grass than hay. However, sometimes if their dental problems are with the incisors, they really struggle to even cut the hay off. So what we need to do is provide forage replacers or high fiber feeds to help with their stomach functioning. Examples of these are sugar beet pulp and soy husks. Those feeds that you moisten and they expand, they're high in fiber, quite good nutritional value, but don't need the chewing that needs to happen with the harder feeds. If this horse with dental problems has never had any choke or colic issues, please continue to offer them hay. They may only have a little bit, but it really does them a lot of good to do that chewing because we want the saliva that's produced to help manage the um, acidity in their gut and the risk of ulceration. So that's our forage requirement, but what about energy? Obviously our overweight horses need less and our underweight horses need more, but how do we manage this better in the senior horse? Any senior horse that has a great body weight just on the forage, in reality, all you need to add is a good balancer or vitamin and mineral supplement. If they're on hay and not grass, you may want to look at adding some vitamin E into that. Um, but if they're getting fresh grass and their healthy weight, they should be getting enough of that. As your horses age, the other thing to do is it's very important to just use a weigh tape and keep a bit of a record of their weight because sometimes our eyes do deceive us and we think they're the same weight and they could be dropping weight, though they could be putting too much on. So just keep a bit of a record of the, how the weigh tape goes around your horse's stomach. So another couple of things that you can add to your senior horse diet if they are underweight is a good commercial feed. Now, the commercial feeds for seniors are actually a better choice than natural grains. They are easier for the horse to get the nutrition out of these pellets. So the horses can, senior horses can sometimes have struggle um, chewing and getting all the nutrition that they need out of the natural grain. So the senior horse pellets from a commercial product actually quite good to help keep them healthy and keep their weight and energy up. The other thing that you can add to a senior horse that's struggling a little bit with weight is oil. Now my recommendation for oil is a linseed oil because in general the senior horses are sometimes gonna have arthritic problems or joint problems and what we don't want to do is add an oil that is pro-inflammatory. So a linseed oil or linseeds are a great way to add a little bit of fat, a little bit of energy, but linseed actually is more anti-inflammatory than pro-inflammatory. I have to say um, my favorite here is Sen Oil, C-E-N Oil, 
which has a stabilized linseed oil so it's going to allow storage a whole lot better and great easy to use um, product and it's done wonders for some of my old ones. Now one of the other nutrients we need to be careful of in our senior horses is protein. Senior horses do tend to lose a lot more muscle a lot easier. This means that they're not really getting all of the amino acids that they need from their food. So sometimes we need to also feed a higher amount of protein. A higher amount is one thing, but we also want to feed a better quality protein. Now there are different types of proteins and what we need is a protein that matches better to the amino acid profile of a horse. Something like a soybean meal is very good for this. Now what do we need to add as supplementary feeds? Um, always, if you're only on forage, I really do think you need to add a general vitamin mineral mix or a horse balancer, ideally one that is created for senior horses. If they're not on fresh forage, then vitamin E is a great help to them. It's a good antioxidant, it helps to repair muscles, and they don't get a lot of it unless they're getting fresh forage. If you have a horse with Cushing's or one that has some kind of um, immune system depression, then adding a vitamin C in, if it isn't in your balancer as well, can be very helpful. And lastly, salt. Now, this isn't only for our senior horses. I have an entire video on salt and the horse. Please add extra salt to your horse's feed. Um, and make sure those electrolytes are balanced, but table salt often is all you need to do the trick. Hope this has helped you have a look and evaluate your senior horse's diet a little bit better. This is a bit close to my heart. Um, I've had to retire two of my horses last week and they're going to live the life of um, healthy luxury and good nutrition so that although they're not being ridden, they get to stay as healthy and happy for as long as I can possibly keep them. Thanks for listening. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. All it does is let you know when I've released another video that could be relevant to you. Um, share this around, share the video, share the link to my channel. Um, comment please on the YouTube. This really does support me being able to go forward and continue to produce these videos. So thanks for listening and I'll see you next week.